There are a few more globally successful brands than Snickers. The chocolate bar has been around now for 90 years and it's pretty much available at every street corner around the planet. But back in 2009, it went through a crisis of confidence. It began to lose market share. Different countries began to execute on the brand in very different ways. And perhaps most importantly of all, the advertising, which for so long had been a cornerstone of the success of the Snickers brand, began to lose its way. Here's an example from 2007 uh, of a brand that doesn't quite know what it wants to say. I think we just accidentally kissed. Quick! Do something manly. Look, it's amusing in a kind of frat boy kind of way, a little tasteless too, I would say. But more importantly, from a strategic point of view, there are two big problems here. First of all, what are we trying to say about the Snickers brand? How will this differentiate our product and our brand from the competitors in the consumer's consideration set? It's not really clear. What's the message? And second, it's not a very distinctive campaign either. Other than the pack shot right at the end, there really aren't any cues or clues that this is a Snicker ad. You can imagine that even consumers that found that amusing would struggle the next day to associate that ad and that story with the Snickers brand, which is, after all, the whole point. Look at these two different concepts, because they're both equally important in the game of driving marketing effectiveness. Differentiation, how well I position myself versus the competitors in the market. And distinctiveness, how much I look like myself and stand out so the consumer instantly recognizes that it's me and instantly allows me to achieve salience in the consumer's mind. Distinctiveness, and differentiation. To achieve differentiation, it's all about positioning. In fact, when we look at positioning, it's really the intended brand image, the intended differentiation that I'm trying to achieve with my positioning statement. But when it comes to achieving distinctiveness, we have to rely on what are called brand codes, or by many academics, including the wonderful Jenny Romanchuk, the concept of a distinctive asset. They mean the same thing. They mean the symbolic vocabulary by which I can carve out my territory, by which I can make you notice me, by which I can stand out and be myself. Obviously, a brand's logo is a code, but a well-run brand that's been around for a while and, and handled properly has more than a logo. There's a symbolic motif, a color, a shape, other assets we can use to instantly stand out and make the consumer know that it's us. Crucially, loyal customers can identify these codes immediately, and equally crucially, they should be unique to our brand and not to the whole category. But make no mistake, although positioning is incredibly important for brand success and marketing effectiveness, so too are codes. These two have equal weighting, in my experience, in achieving marketing effectiveness. So, the insights for the Snickers team as they began to look in 2010 at fixing their decline in market share were, first of all, that Snickers genuinely did relieve hunger. But, interestingly, a key insight was that hunger makes people not themselves. Therefore, if Snickers can relieve hunger rather than just satisfying the consumer, we can speak to something higher up the benefit ladder. If Snickers relieves hunger, Snickers also allows you to make you more you again. Armed with that insight, Snickers had a clear vision of how they might position the brand going forward. But there was an extra insight too. And that insight was Snickers over its nine decades had built a series of incredibly powerful distinctive assets, which they simply weren't using enough at the time. Really, there were four key codes of the brand. First, obviously, the Snickers logo. Then that dark, rich brown Panton. The red parallelogram. And finally, the rip and chew shot as we open the chocolate bar and we see the caramel and nuts uh, stretch out. These are all wonderful codes and incredibly useful in the job of driving distinctiveness and ultimately achieving effectiveness.
So armed with these insights, it was a new campaign in 2010, which began with a very famous Super Bowl ad in which in this case, Snickers began to communicate the right messages about its brand. Let's take a look. Mike, what is your deal, oh, man? Oh, come on, man. You've been riding me all day. Mike, you're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. Oh. Baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my 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 Eat a Snickers. Better? Better. Hey! How about that? That hurt. You're not you when you're hungry. It's a wonderful campaign. Again, perfectly relating to the strategy, but even better, it has what some people in the industry would call legs. It's a creative idea that can stretch to different countries where we can use different celebrities, and even within the US, where we can pick a host of unexpected alternative realities to transform regular consumers into when they get hungry. And the campaign works equally well in print form with a series of winning creative executions that again communicate that point that when you're hungry you're not yourself and Snickers can solve that problem. It works beautifully in an interactive scenario too where various different apps and social media uh, engagements allow the consumer to test out the principles of who would they be when they're hungry. And it's not just that we use the codes here to create an environment which is instantly recognized as being Snickers. One of the signals that you are dealing with a proper brand management team is not just that we use the codes to make sure our work is distinctive and the consumer immediately knows it's us. At a higher level, when you have a well-established set of codes over many decades, as Snickers surely does, we can do what's called playing with the codes. By inverting them, by tweaking or altering them, we signal to the customer, you recognize me, but I'm different. I'm fresh, but I'm the same. I'm creative, but here's my heritage. It's a wonderful way to keep an older brand fresh by playing and inverting the codes. In the case of Snickers, for example, when they launched the mini version, they truncated their logo in a beautiful little twist. Over in Russia, a brilliant game was played by the Russian team in charge of the brand, where they dressed up the Snickers brand in the different packaging of the sister brands within the portfolio. Here, Snickers dressed like Twix, and the idea again is that here is the actual bar not being itself when it's hungry. They did it beautifully with Bounty as well, as you can see here. In reality, what we see when we look at this combination of differentiation and distinctiveness is the important dual engine that drives marketing effectiveness so often. And the results speak for themselves. In a relatively short amount of time, two years, Snickers were first able to arrest that decline in sales. And then as they rolled out the campaign across all of their various different 50 something markets, the brand actually began to grow again. In fact, by 2011, it had increased its sales by 15% globally on the previous year. And in 56 out of 58 markets, the brand was growing again. Not just a stunning uh, national success, but an international success. No surprise, it's earned a pantheon of effies uh, related to this incredibly successful work, and it teaches us several key lessons. Differentiation and distinctiveness can exist together. Don't see them as being one or the other, you need both. Differentiation comes from the brand position well executed, but distinctiveness comes from your brand codes executed over all possible executions. Marketers overstate their brand salience. If you look at the way brands are made with incredible focus over three or four months, versus how they're consumed, uh, often with very light attention, if at all, by consumers, you see the importance of codes signaling to the customer that it's me here. And remember that, because the first rule of branding, first, they must know that it's me. If they don't know it's your brand, all bets are off. And codes help us get there. Find a short list of brand codes, and then apply them mercilessly and repeatedly over all your creative work and every possible touch point. And playing with codes once they've been established is a brilliant way to revitalize and refresh your brand. Never forget, distinctiveness comes from brand codes. Visit the EFI's website for a database of all their amazing case studies, and come to Marketing Week for more videos in this series and information on the mini MBA in marketing.